What's going on, Fireflies? It's me, Neon Emue, and I'm here to present you with some greatness. All right, you guys, so today's video is going to be fun. It's going to be a cute little concept video. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I love a good old redemption. I love when something, you know, someone's an underdog and they get to come back up and rise from the ashes and get to prove themselves. And so that's what we're doing today. Today we're going to be doing a video on some redemptions of a few eyeshadow palettes, three in particular that I've reviewed in the past. And we're going to see if there's any way we can rework these palettes and get them to, you know, perform better than they originally did. Before this video begins, if at any point you are enjoying yourself and enjoying me and the content I'm creating, then go ahead and give the video a huge thumbs up, like, and support. It means so much. Also, if you want to continue seeing me on your YouTube feed, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, so that you don't miss the next time I upload. And without further ado, we're just going to get right into this palette redemption um, and hopefully find a new palette that will work. Because, uh, yeah. So, let's go. Alright you guys, so like I said, this is going to be a redemption video. In front of me, I have three eyeshadow palettes which, you know, performed less than I would like in the past. Um, and I've done reviews on them and I just, you know, it was disappointed with. So the hope and plan is that with this video, we'll be able to uh, bring back something that, you know, didn't necessarily work and hopefully find a palette that I can work with in the future. So the main thing that's going to help bring these palettes back and hopefully help me find a great palette to use is going to be the P. Louise eyeshadow bases. These bases have been the talk of the town for the past few months, basically being like revolutionary in terms of eyeshadow bases and just helping to bring any palette to life, helping to you know improve buildability, improve pigmentation, just overall greatness when it comes to eyeshadows. So, <laughs> we're, we're yeah. so the plan here is to just hopefully rework some of these palettes and you know get some good out of it. Cause you you spend money on palettes and then if they don't work and you're too lazy to return like me, then you know you're stuck with them. So we shall see. All right, you guys. So we are zoomed in and we're ready to start. I'm gonna pretty much start from like the palette who I had the least amount of troubles with going into the palette that you know was just primal in general first palette i'm going to be starting with is the afrique palette by juvia's place in my past review the juvia's place afrique palette was a palette which i approved of because a it's juvia's place and you guys know i stand juvia's place and it was a palette that i didn't necessarily have too much of a problem with but i feel like could be better it is a nice little blue on um, there it is oh okay. i always judge eyeshadow palettes with color off of the yellows and their blues and right now this yellow is a struggle um this yellow is more of like a uh what's the one is, would it be i guess it would be considered a canary yellow like a a it's very uh it's a very dusty looking yellow is this the best juvia's place palette in my opinion no, I felt like some of the shades weren't as pigmented as I wanted them to. They weren't quite as blendable. The main problem I had here is that this palette didn't perform as great as past Juvia Places palettes have. And so hopefully using these eyeshadow bases, I will be able to get this palette to perform better. All right, so before I start, obviously I'm gonna prime my eyes. Because I'm gonna be working with so much color in this palette, I'm gonna be using the P. Louise eyeshadow base in the color Rumor Zero. And as I said before, I use white eyeshadow bases whenever I'm working with bright, vibrant colors just to help the colors pop more. And so hopefully, this base will do just that. So in case you're someone who's never used these eyeshadow bases, I can tell you now that patting this eyeshadow base in is gonna make it perform better, as well as not setting it with powder. I feel like a lot of people aren't setting eyeshadow bases with powder now, and that's great. But if you still are, and if you use this eyeshadow base, then don't. All right, you guys, so the eye has been primed and prepped, and we're ready to go. In the last video I did with this palette, I worked with the warmer shades. So I worked with Binto, Aya, and Dakar. This time I want to work with more of the, like, cooler tones. Uh, I know that there was 
issues whenever I swatch this blue color. So we're going to get started. I'm going to first start and create a bit of a gradient. I'm going to use the color Keatsy, which is that soft beige in this palette. And I'm going to put that in as a bit of a transition. All right, so I'm going to start building up the crease. I'm going to take the color Niger, which is a standard green, and I'm going to apply that in the crease. I have noticed that, and I don't know if this is the palette or this is the way that the base works, but stamping the shade into onto the eye first and then blending it out is what helps bring that pigmentation in. That's a general rule of thumb, but I'm noticing that it definitely helps to improve the shade overall. Next, I'm gonna take the shade Cote de Devu. I'm gonna take the blue shade out of this palette. And this was one of the shades in my original view which I noticed would have an issue when trying to apply. So I'm gonna take that and stamp that onto the other corner. Ooh, wow. Yo! I've said this numerous times, Juvia Place makes some of the best shadows in terms of color and, help, and you know they have some of the best intensities. But this shade right here, of course like I said before, it's better to stamp the shade in. Alright so now I'm going to carve out the crease a little so I can work with the metallics. I'm just taking that eyeshadow base once again. Now I'm going to take the color Contino the purple metallic and I'm gonna put that on the outer part whatever part right in here. Like I'm noticing that there's still a little bit of patchiness on this blue. Uh, it's interesting but you know We'll keep it cool soon. Then I'm gonna take the color Togo, which is that sea foam metallic, and I'm gonna put that in the rest of that open space. So that is the completed eye work using the Afrique eyeshadow palette. Um, my thoughts, well, here's the thing. The colors that I used in this palette weren't the same colors that I used in my original review. However, I can tell you that there's definitely a difference from using this eyeshadow base and then just like a regular eyeshadow base because these colors are extremely vibrant. In terms of the metallics, it's hard to mess up metallics. Jewish Place knows what they're doing with metallics, so I'm not questioning that. In terms of the mattes, I still feel like that blue is just a tad bit patchy, but I also know that blues are hard to make. Needless to say, this looks extremely vibrant on the eyes. So, in terms of improving the performance of this palette, it's, it, this palette performs pretty decent on its own. I definitely think it helps take it a step up but in terms of like any difference slightly subtle how about you guys let me know how, how this looks thanks to the p louise eyeshadow base so you guys definitely let me know down below if the p louise base definitely improved the performance of the afric palette by Julius place if it didn't then you know whatever so we're gonna move on to the next palette all right you guys so we're moving on to the next palette hopefully my eyes don't look green but you know taking makeup off is a struggle so the next palette that we're going to try and redeem is going to be the Dark Magic Eyeshadow Palette by Morphe in collaboration with Jaclyn Hill. Now as you guys know, there was a lot of drama surrounding this palette and then the entire vault as a whole. So the issue that arose with this palette was that the original vault, which was released to influencers and the vault that was released to the customers were completely different vaults. They weren't pigmented. They weren't performing as great as a Morphe palette would or as great as the Jaclyn Hill original eyeshadow palette performed. Next shade we have is Potion, which is a four in army green. And that looks like one of the shades that people had issues with. Okay. Mm, and I am seeing this palette is visually appealing, however, I feel like it is not what I wanted. So, so there were a lot of issues that were surrounding this palette and the vault as a whole. In my opinion, the Dark Magic eyeshadow palette was the worst of the bunch, simply because a lot of the shades were very dusty, were not pigmented whatsoever, and it was just a lackluster palette. We've seen this kind of color story with eyeshadow palettes like the Subculture palette by ABH, and it performs 
great aside from ABH's, you know, struggle. Needless to say, this palette was very lackluster, and so hopefully using the P. Louise bases, this palette will perform even better. So the first shade I'm going to be using is the shade Mojo, and I'm going to apply that into my crease. And Mojo I didn't have a problem with, so I don't really have anything to say with that. Now we're going to move into one of the shades that caused a lot of trouble for me and a lot of other people as well. I'm going to be taking the shade Potion, which is that Army Fatigue Green. And uh, this shade lacked a lot of pigment, so hopefully we will see some improvement. Okay, I can definitely tell you that this base definitely saved this shade. I remember very specifically how this shade just had no color whatsoever. And I do find myself stamping as opposed to swiping, but overall the shade performs 10 times better. It just lays down and it blends out actually. The shade, I remember the shade just didn't blend at all and now it works just like any other eyeshadow. Now I'm going to take the shade Inside Job, which is that forest green, and I'm going to apply that next to Mojo. I didn't have any problems with this shade, so I don't have any expectations as opposed to how it performs. I'm also running that up into the crease just a little. So I didn't have any problems with the metallics in this palette. They were okay. There are literally like three, but I want to at least see if I can get them to amplify any because I do feel like the metallics in this palette are just a little dry. Got a lot of dry. By the way, this time I'm using the eyeshadow base in rumor number four, which is the deepest color, I think, or is the next deepest. Anyway, and I'm just gonna take that on the center of the red. Okay, a sloppy halo into that dark magic palette I'm taking the shade tricky which is that deep emerald metallic I'm going to stamp that on the if I can get it off onto my brush because this doesn't want to work okay where is the shade yeah did the shade dry out oh! so you guys I'm literally digging into the, I'm barely getting any pit oh wow Jacqueline Girl, I don't remember this happening the first time. Okay, after digging into it forever, I'm just gonna take the emerald, ooh, pink one, hello. And to finish this off, I'm gonna take the shade Power Cut and apply it onto the center. Oh, wow. So I didn't have any problems when I first used this shade. However, I don't remember it being this blinding. So, you guys have P. Louise to thank for that. Keep in mind when I'm doing these looks, um, that I'm not trying to be neat and perfect. I'm literally just trying to see if the eyeshadow improves any. So if the look is not as neat as my past work is, then know that that's the reason why. I'm talking to you, King J Beauty, because you know you'll read me. Okay, so that's gonna be all the work. Uh, in terms of the Dark Magic Eyeshadow Palette, P. Louise definitely amped this up. I don't remember this palette being as pigmented or as striking as it was. Um, the shade that I definitely had the biggest issue with, uh, Potion, definitely redeemed itself thanks to this palette. It blended out so much better. It was so much richer in pigment. I, of course, the whole palette, the whole situation with the fall was just a mess, but needless to say, P. Louis saved the day and brought this palette back to life. So, in terms of Morphe's Dark Magic palette, P. Louise is the saving grace here. So, moving on to the last eyeshadow look, and I'm sure you guys know what palette I'm about to use, and um, this one should be interesting. All right, you guys, so we've moved into the last eyeshadow palette. Oh, gosh, my eyes look horrible. Just disregard the green out. Ugh. I hate having to work with multiple palettes. All right, you guys, so we're moving into the last eyeshadow palette, and I'm pretty sure you guys know exactly exactly what's about to happen here so the last eyeshadow palette that i'm going to be working with and hoping to redeem in this video is the maybelline lemonade craze eyeshadow palette uh to all my fireflies and all the true supporters of my page you guys know i have had a very 
very difficult relationship with this palette. This is the fourth time I've featured this palette in a video. Wow. Uh, listen, if you've tried this palette out, you know what the problems are. The colors are not very pigmented. The shade that was pretty much the staple of this palette, Eliminate Craze, does not work on deep complexions whatsoever. Right off the bat, this color isn't necessarily as popping as I would like it to be. My thoughts on this palette is that this palette is very disappointing. Where is the color? Where is the pigment? Where is it? Where is it? Ah! And then, if I touch it, even the slightest to blend it out, it's gone. Who is this palette made for? Who? Who? I've made this point numerous times. I've said how I felt that Soda Pop was made for dark skin people and people with melanin in general, and then Lemonade Crisis is made for those without. And I, you know, after talking to people who are uh, lack melanin, then they've also said that this palette is trash. So hopefully, P. Louise can come and save the day with the Lemonade Craze palette. Fingers crossed. Um, everything's crossed at this point. So here we go. So we're just gonna we're we're gonna I'm just gonna go and and go balls deep into this palette. I'm gonna dip into Lemonade Craze first, and I'm going to attempt to recreate the look that I did when I first reviewed this palette. Gosh, again. This palette has a lot of kickback and which was super disappointing considering, you know, palettes with a lot of kickback to be palettes that work extremely well. <laughs> Limited Crazy said, no girl. Again, I stamping and lo and behold, it doesn't work. Oh my gosh, girl, what? Maybe Lemonade, maybe this shade wasn't meant to work. <clears throat> oh gosh, let me see. There's, there's a swatch there. Let's take a different approach here. I was using Rumor 4 to prime eyes, but I'm gonna switch over to Rumor 0, and hopefully, because of the white base, it will perform better. Now I'm gonna attempt one more try at Lemonade Craze, and I'm going to stamp like I did before. Okay, there we go. It's a little better. Okay, that works so much better. Of course, like I said before, Stamping the shade definitely helps to intensify it and it doesn't necessarily blend away as bad as it used to so that's a plus. I still wish that there was a better intensity when it comes to the shade especially considering how much kickback comes from it. Another problem that I had with this palette was the brownish shades didn't pick up on me. I feel like they were too light and you know that's something I necessarily can't fix however if I can get some kind of intensity from it We'll see. So I'm gonna take the shade Old Fashioned. I'm gonna apply that into my crease and the outer dirt of my eye as well. And that works. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been able to do what is considered the impossible and attempt and revive this palette a little. Now it's not the biggest revival. Palette overall just lacks intensity in the shades as a whole. But I can tell you that I'm definitely getting more color payoff than I did before. So that's something worth applauding. Now I'm gonna take one more matte shade. I'm gonna take the color Ice Pop, which is that pinkish red, that very pinkish red. And this shade, I didn't have a problem with before. I feel like it was the most intense matte out of the entire palette. It might be because I've already used, there's nothing tacky for it to stick onto, but you know, it's whatever. Like I said, I didn't have an issue with the shade in the first use of it, so it's all good. All right, and of course, I didn't have any problems with the metallics in this palette, so I'm just gonna apply a few metallics in here. I'm gonna start with the shade Strawberry Lemonade and apply that on the lid. I've said it once, and I've said it a million times, and I'll continue saying it. The metallics in this palette are stunning, and it sucks that the mattes aren't as great. You know, I'm actually gonna take the shade Citrus as well, and I'm gonna put that on top of that metallic too, just, you know, just to play around with it, because it's the last look of the video. <laughs> Just give it a little extra dimension and shit. And now because this is the last shade I'm using, I'm gonna take the color Main Squeeze and I'm gonna put it in the tear duct. And I'm done. Um, I'm done. 
Alright you guys, so that is it for all three of the eyeshadows that I am redeeming today. Final breakdown. Starting off with the Juvia's Place Afrique eyeshadow palette. This is the palette that I had the least amount of trouble with in the beginning. And on its redemption, I still feel pretty much the same way. Juvia's Place's eyeshadows are just super intense, super bright, super colorful. The issue that I had was that some of the brighter, bolder colors in the palette needed some extra mm, some va va voom specifically the yellow and specifically the blue i did use the blue this time in the video and in the look and it performed better than i initially thought it would uh i still feel like that blue was a little patchy though so in terms of a saving grace or in terms of redemption it's a meh you know some things were better it still needed some work um, overall, I still believe the Afric palette is a great palette to use and to have. Moving on into the Dark Magic Eyeshadow Palette from Morphe and Jaclyn Hill. Originally, my issues with this palette was that a lot of the more staple shades in this palette performed horribly. We had a shade like Potion, which originally was trash. We had a shade Busted, which was busted. And uh, Inside Job and Mojo were also shades that were questionable to use. Upon the redemption of this palette, this palette is definitely the clear, or this palette was definitely more pigmented when using this palette was definitely more blendable it was easier to work with the shades something i didn't notice when working with this palette though however is that this emerald shade right here trickery did not want to come up on any brush whatsoever it barely comes up on my finger so that's an issue with morphe and the production of this palette as a whole needless to say p louise was able to be a saving grace for this palette and if i want to use this palette again in the future i will you know, um, P. Louise would just have to be a must in order to redeem this palette. Some people are set to just using one eyeshadow base, and if you want to make this palette work, then P. Louise would be your one eyeshadow base to use. And um, yeah, that's that on that. All right, and finally, oh dear God, the Maybelline Lemonade Craze Eyeshadow Palette. I, when I originally came up with the concept of this video, I this was the palette that I immediately jumped to and this was the palette that I wanted to work so bad and as you can clearly see as much as the P. Louise base did help to improve certain aspects of this palette this palette just sucks <laughs> I'm sorry I'm so sorry this palette sucks like you guys can see on my eyes right now the yellow Lemonade Craze was the star of the show in this palette and it didn't perform whatsoever. It it just wasn't there. It was the P. Louise Beast was able to save the shade old fashioned, was able to make the shade a bit more intense, and surprisingly ice pop the red cranberry looking shade. It didn't perform as great as I remember it performing. Like it wasn't as pigmented at all. And I don't know if it was the base, if it was the way the other shadows were working, but I don't know. I don't, the, the, the issue with this palette is that it was not intense whatsoever. It had no intensity, it had no depth, it had no, just no color payoff whatsoever. And with the P. Louise base, I was hoping that it was able to help intensify it. But at the end of the day, if the palette sucks, then there's no way that the, uh, a base can help improve it's just a bad quality palette I don't know if you're somebody out there hi hello YouTube world if you're somebody who was able to work with the eliminate craze eyeshadow palette and get it to be intense then please let me know and tell me exactly what you did because I, I don't know I've tried this you guys have seen me I've, this is the third time I've tried this eyeshadow palette and it just doesn't work and I don't know why and it just bugs me it bugs me so much so Lemonade Craze is a bust and I there's I don't I don't think there's any way you can save this palette. I really don't. I've tried everything. I've tried different bases, I've tried different approaches, different brushes, and it just doesn't work. So no. Sorry. Alright you guys, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Is there an eyeshadow palette that you guys feel like needs to be redeemed and could possibly be redeemed with some a magical base such as the p louise bases then let me know down in the comments below i would love to get some feedback and again if you guys know any other ways to make crappy eyeshadow palettes work then let me know because you know who likes spending money on something that doesn't work i don't i really don't and i don't want you guys to either so just let me know down in the comments below and 
we can help each other because <laughs> somebody needs to. But yeah, again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, which I hope and pray you did, then go ahead and give this video a huge thumbs up, like, and support. It means so much. Also, if you want to continue seeing me on your YouTube feed, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I upload. We are still on the way to 1,000. So the goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers before my one year anniversary on YouTube, which is in December. So hopefully you guys can help push my channel out there to all your friends and whoever else is in the world. Let them know about good old Neon MUA and hopefully we can reach 1,000 soon. I I don't want to sound like I'm pressed about numbers, but I really do want to see a landmark in my channel. And would you guys help me? We can get there. You know, so definitely do that. I'll see you guys. Follow me on all my social media accounts. That is Neon MUA on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I would love to have you guys be a part of my family. Twitter is so fun. I like all the other accounts are great, but Twitter is fun. And I'd love interacting with you guys. I love when you guys tell me that, oh, you're from my YouTube channel and you, you want to interact with me because. <laughs> Listen, I have no life, and Twitter is my life. <laughs> so uh, definitely follow my social media accounts. I would love to have you be a part of my family and interact with you guys. So, all right, you guys, that's going to be the end of this video. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. From the bottom of my big old black heart, thank you so much. And until next time, bye.